All right, so today we're going to be talking about how to make a motion map. A motion map is a very good way to show someone that you understand. So you're showing me that you know that you understand how an object is moving. Okay, so let's go over what I need to see when I'm looking at your motion maps. So first off, I need to make sure that your number line is labeled so that you've got maybe a zero, a five, ten meters labeled on there just so I have a reference point, okay? Um, also note that the position axis this time is kind of tilted over on its side, so it's weird. We usually have time on the y-axis, but this time we have position on our horizontal axis, and hopefully that's not too confusing because this is the only... Think of it more like a number line rather than an axis, okay? So it's a number line that tells you where you are at a certain time. Other requirements that we have is that we've got dots that indicate where you are or where the object is every second. So we can tell from this motion map that at zero seconds, the object starts at zero meters. And then a second later, it moved two meters late forward. And a second later, it moved uh, two meters forward. Okay, so that's very clear to us. And it's also got velocity arrows. Okay, and sometimes you'll hear me refer to these as vectors, and all that is is an arrow. And velocity ar arrows are used to represent how fast an object is moving at a certain time. So the longer the arrow is, you've got a greater velocity. Another advantage of using arrows as a way to um, show velocity is that not only can you change how much by how long the arrow is, but it tells you the direction too. All right, next up we have that the initial position should be labeled with t equals zero seconds. Very important um, because if this t equals zero seconds isn't here, very hard for me to tell which one you mean to be the uh, first, the first velocity vector. Okay, so you need to make sure that the t equals zero seconds is on there. It's the most important label. And then likewise, we've got labeled time intervals. Um, in the regular level class, you can label these as one second for each one, and then this would continue as two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. For an honors level class, what we can do is you can just tell me that for each time interval, You've got one second, okay? And that's kind of convenient too, but also can be a little complicated. So we'll do some examples in class, in honors, that involves uh, using uh, this time interval notation here, where all you need to show me is the time interval and the first uh, position. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, first, we've got a chimpanzee starts at the origin, and moves forward at two meters per second for four seconds. Okay, so first you wanna make sure that you get your initial position there. It's t equals zero seconds. And ask yourself, where is it gonna be at one second? Well, we know that for every two meters, there is one second, that for every one second, there is two meters, and we know it's also moving forward. So what it's going to do is it's going to move forward to the position of two meters one second later. Okay. And it's going to do this a few more times. Two seconds. It should be at four. Three seconds. It should be at six and at four seconds it should be at eight okay and finally what we need is these velocity arrows here you want to try your best to draw these equal in length because after after all, it is moving at a constant 2 meters per second. Um, one thing that you can do to kind of 
and if you're not a great drawer and I actually prefer that you do this is that if the velocity is constant you draw these little hash lines here congruency marks to show me that these single hashed arrows are all the same length okay all right so for this next one we have water buffalo and it starts at a position of seven meters and walks backwards at three meters per second so let's locate seven meters we've got the five here and then seven is two after it and that's the first position so you got to label it here and ask yourself where is it one second later and again we know that it's moving backwards and it's moving in such a way that for every three meters there is one second vice versa for every one second there is three meters so if it's at seven it moves backwards three meters after one second one two three that's at one second then we've got one two three now this problem doesn't specify when the water buffalo stops so I'm just gonna continue a few more times one two three one two three okay so we've got a label our seconds here and then finally add our velocity arrows now one thing you'll notice from our previous problem is that the velocity arrows here kind of self-correct themselves you want to show that the water buffalo in this problem moved faster but it already does because the dots are more spaced out okay so you can tell after a few of these you get a feeling for it that if the dots are spaced out more that the object's moving much faster okay so notice i have much longer arrows because there's more space between the dots that's one feature of motion maps that you want to kind of get a feel for the closer the dots are together the slower it is the further apart they are the faster it is all right so for our last example of motion maps we'll see that um, we can actually have one object do a few different things okay so here we have a swan it starts at negative six meters per second and I'm gonna go ahead and actually just get that down zero seconds and it walks forward at one meter per second now it does that for five seconds it stops and walks backwards walks backwards at one meters per second so there's a lot of information here let's do this piece by piece so it's doing this for five seconds so let's count forward at one meter per second one two three four and five okay so then we've got arrows 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 I'm going to stop there because it tells us that it stops. I'm going to do congruency marks to show that these are all equal. Now, what do we do here? Because it stops and it's not going anywhere. So it's going to stay at this negative one spot on the number line. But how do you show me that it's still here because the dots are going to overlap? Well, what you want to do here is show me that it stops for a while now in this problem I didn't tell you how long it stops for that was my mistake so let's say that it just stops for I don't know four seconds so let's show you how I want that to look so we go above one 
minutes, six seconds two three and four okay so we're gonna stack our dots on top of each other when something is stopped and now it walks backwards at one meters per second we're gonna line up one two three four and we'll just say it stops there. Adding my arrows here. And finally labeling my numbers. 10 seconds, 11, 12, 13, and so on. Um, one final thing I want you to notice for these motion maps is that notice that for the time that it stopped, there were no velocity arrows. So this is kind of a feature that's built into the motion maps too. As long as you stack up those dots when an object is rest, the velocity arrows will take care of themselves. Oh, and also I forgot these little congruency marks here. Remember, uh, same velocity at the end and at the beginning. So I'm just gonna do one congruency mark for each of these vectors or these velocity arrows, okay? so. Um, again, this is a new skill, and this is all about practice, so hopefully this helped. See ya.